Greetings, unsettled souls. <laughs> if you're watching live, that was a little early. Greetings, unsettled souls. You are listening to The Correct Views, Sam I. B. DeGange reporting for The Media Speaks. What you saw was Christelle's hand a little early. Um, I've got some confusion from people sending me on which one is the high def and which one is the low def, even though I don't know how you can't tell them apart. Christelle, please put your hand in front of the low def. If your hand is blocking out the screen, thank you, Christelle, then you are looking at the low def. Go to themediaspeaks.com, or if you have a slow computer, stay with the low def. The other camera that didn't have a hand in front of it, you are watching the high def. I did that quicker than I've ever done it. Friends, um, do me a favor. Go to themediaspeaks.com and look at the work of Kyle Court, D. Lake, and myself. You will love what we do. And friends, I'm going to go on real quick right now to a um, little mini Fukushima update. It came from the show's very first correspondent, and that correspondent would be Giselle. And I'm only pausing because whenever you hear a ding, it means that Google is uh, messing around with my connection. All right, we're live again. I paused it for you guys. Google always wants to knock you offline when you're in the middle of a show because Google sucks. As I was saying, uh, Giselle gave me a little mini Fukushima update today. If you don't know who Giselle is, prior to YouTube messing up my account by not giving me my videos back after they were erased, uh, Giselle had monster hits reporting on Occupy when nobody had reported on Occupy yet. I mean, it was something rather amazing. So, um, I tried to get her on the show when she gave me the little mini Fuku update today, and uh, she hides. You know, one of my closest friends I've never met, and she hides. I've seen, like, two pictures of her. Uh, I don't know why, and I'm picking on her live, and she's going to kill me. But she is a fountain of truth, and she's a wonderful, sweet person as well. Who hides? All right, guys, uh, RT.com, all of these are from that. And all jokes aside, we are very thankful to Giselle because I put together a little mini Fukushima update for everyone. When she had sent me these things, um, three in a row revealed that TEPCO hid dangerous Fukushima radiation levels for months. Japan's Tokyo Electric Power Company is again in the midst of controversy for failing to timely report on record radiation levels at the crippled Fukushima nuclear plant. It is now blasted for holding back strontium measurements since September. TEPCO on Wednesday revealed that it detected 5 million becquerels per liter of radioactive strontium-90 in the groundwater. And if you look at FukushimaDiary.com, you will find that they don't test your fish for strontium, um, I'm going to be doing that shortly. I was going to do it tonight, but just look it up. You'll find that I'm not lying to you. And the sample taken 25 meters from the ocean as early as last September, Reuters reports. The legal limit for releasing strontium into the ocean is just 30 becquerels per liter. Do you think that might be why they're not testing the fish for it? Do you have a hunch that that could be in fact true? Although the reading was alarmingly uh, five times the levels taken at the same spot two months prior to that, TEPCO decided not to immediately report it to the country's nuclear watchdog. Uh, it's the same company. It's General Electric, by the way. If you own General Electric stock, ditch it. You are part of the problem. Get into an infrastructure mutual fund instead. Um, they reported that they were not uh, letting people know what the levels were of radioactive elements out of concern. See, TEPCO lies to you just so you weren't worried. The other, they're doing it for your own good, if you're an idiot. This is despite strontium-90 being considered twice as harmful as cesium-137, which they do test for which also released in large quantities during the meltdowns at the Fukushima plant after the 2011 earthquake. And Google is uh, messing me around again. All oh, my life, people. He's still there. Ever loyal. According to TEPCO, uh, spokesman cited by Reuters, the decision was due to, quote, uncertainty about the reliability and accuracy of the September strontium reading. Unquote, which prompted the plant's operator to re-examine the data. Oh, yeah, well, it might alarm people, so why don't we just say that we don't think it's true? And then when we find out it is true and it's already too late for you to do anything about it, like relocate, then uh, we'll come out and say, oops. 
However, Nuclear Regulation Authority, the NRA, useless. Officials say no data came up until now despite repeated demands from TEPCO to TEPCO. We did not hear about this figure that they detected in last September. We have been repeatedly pushing TEPCO to release strontium data since November. Why didn't you go there and do it? It should not take them this long to release this information. Sinjo Kinjo, head of the NRA task force, who is obviously useless on contaminated water issues at Fukushima, Fukushima told the agency, let me ask you listening to this, if you did your job this poorly, would you still have it? Because I'm just a DJ in an adult club. That's who I am. I'm a DJ in an adult club. I'm in a band. I do this show. It's not the only thing I am, but I do that for money. Extra money, other money, my money. Um, if I did my job this poorly, I would not have a job. And yet we're dealing with life and death here. And these people still have a job when they managed to underreport a poisoning that could affect millions of people, both in the country and out of the country, who eat seafood. This is not an appropriate way to deal with the desire of the public for transparency, and in particular, the regulator, which is now very closely regulating issues related to public health, the environment, and so on. Martin Scholz, a senior research fellow at the Fujitsu Research Institute, has said. And then there's a little bit more there. Make sure you look at the article. It's on RT. I want to go to the next one. Um, TEPCO reveals a record cesium level in Fukushima number one well. They're testing the cesium instead of the strontium because they're so high on the strontium that it's not even imaginable. But the genie is getting out of the bag hell, just out of the bag here, just like me and Kevin Blanche and Helen Caldecott and Lauren Moray and Chris Busby and everybody else has said. Now even the, the cesium levels are going through the roof. And I got sidetracked on the uh, Fukushima update, and uh, D-Lake pointed it out to me. You ha How deadly is cesium? I'll tell you how deadly it is. You ever hear of the band Obituary? How about the band Death? Um, how about Cradle of Filth? You take names if you are deadly, and your music is deadly. You take names that imply that so you can set your theater. There's a band called Cesium-137. That is how deadly, death, obituary, obituary, filth ridden it is. Cesium is that deadly. Again, I do that. For those of you that tune into the correct views, you know I give you the news in ways that the average Joe can understand it. A record high level of radioactive cesium has been found in groundwater beneath the crippled Fukushima No. 1 nuclear power plant, operator TEPCO revealed. On February 13th, TEPCO Electric Power Company reported 37,000 becquerels of cesium-134 and 93,000 becquerels of cesium-137. They were detected per liter of groundwater sampled from the monitoring well earlier that day. Let us not forget that a becquerel is one reaction inside the body per second. Each reaction can trigger anything from susceptibility to the common cold to brain cancer. Water samples were taken from the technical well located to the, next to the second floor power unit, some 50 meters from the coast. These figures, the total reading, are the highest of all cesium measurements taken previously. Experts do not rule out that radioactive water is leaking from the underground tunnel, which is located close to the second power unit to the seashore. And of course, this is the food that you are feeding yourself and your family and your children. Experts, uh, excuse me, however, no exact reason for such a significant increase of radioactive cesium content in the groundwater has been given so far. Japanese newspaper, the Ashahi Shimbun, reported that the amount of radioactive chemicals seems to be increasing. On February 12th, the same sampling well had produced combined cesium of 76,000 becquerels per liter, 76,000 chances per second of getting cancer. The Nuclear Regulatory Authority accused TEPCO of lacking basic understanding of measuring. No, they are deliberately hiding this, people. It is as obvious as my fat ass sitting in this chair. Guys, the last thing I want to get to, again, thank you, Giselle, you rock. 
RT.com, uh, end of your mini Fukushima update. If you don't know, hit subscribe. I do Fukushima news all the time and a massive Fukushima update uh, every month. 100 tons of toxic water leaked at Fukushima plant. Well, they're leaking 300 to 400 tons per day. I'm going to wait for my live people to catch up because Google's terrible. They're back. Um, now this is an extra 100 tons. And again, I've said forever, and Giselle is guilty of this, and I love her very much, and I want her to get out of there. Um, you cannot live in California, Oregon, um, Washington, the coast of Alaska, and Hawaii because of what GE, the good things that GE brought to life. And if you do, you're shortening your life. Look at my last show. Look at Washington State's birth defects going through the roof. And uh, there's other issues there with a the processing plant um, also poisoning the state. I mean, this is a real issue. Around 100 tons of highly radioactive water leaked from one of the tanks at Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant. The plant's operator, Tepco Electric Power Company, which is GE, said on Thursday, the water reportedly spilled beyond the barrier that is set up to block it from flowing out of the tank. Tepco believes the leakage has not reached the adjacent sea and there is no damage nearby that flows out to the sea. Oh, it got by our barrier, but it didn't get into the water, don't worry. The process to stop the radioactive leak is underway. The Bill is said to contain 230 million becquerels per liter of strontium and other beta-emitting radioactive substances. Well, Sam, what's strontium? Strontium is what gives you bone cancer. Um, you can help it but not solve it by taking calcium and bentonite clay. Um, look up uh, Chris Busby calcium and Fukushima. It will give you all the information you need on that. Uh, the leak was discovered by workers on patrol around 11.25 p.m. on Wednesday. It is the latest in a series of leaks that TEPCO has struggled to control at the stricken power plant, and we've gone over them repeatedly. It says uh, previous statements from the company it says as many as 20 trillion becquerels of cesium-137. You never see that unless you look at Obama's debt. Uh, for the nation, 10 trillion becquerels of strontium-90 and 40 trillion becquerels of tritium have found their way into the sea by groundwater leaks between May 2011 and August 2013. Let's not forget, uh, and this is fact, look it up, I'm not making this up, they have never seen the amount of death littering the ocean floor that we are seeing now. Never. Um... We have cancer rates going off the charts on anything even near there. If you're still living in that area, and especially if you're dumb enough to still be eating seafood, you're killing yourself. I've told the story repeatedly of a gentleman in his 20s that I work with who uh, just underwent surgery. And you know what his favorite food is? Tuna. He's been eating it since the meltdown. Guess what? His cojones need an operator's on operated on and this is not something that is in my head it's not something that's just pithy and happened to be out there you do not find this high number of cancers uh, running up and down the west coast like we are seeing just from random luck look at the conjoined whales that we th saw from Mikhail Thalen's article I mean come on people wake up wake up all right we're gonna go on it seems like ghosts wish to haunt rather dull people. Um, I do believe in this sort of thing. Is this a real haunting? I have absolutely no idea. But it was interesting enough that I couldn't get rid of the article. So I went ahead and uh, have put it in today's report. This is from NewYorkDailyNews.com. Haunting in Indiana leads to families exorcisms, child's levitation reports. Well, before I get into this, I have the obvious question that I absolutely cannot wait to ask. If a ghost is in my house, I'm curious enough that I'm going to go ahead and stay there. There have been questions about the house that I'm currently living in. Uh, is there a ghost here? I have absolutely no data whatsoever to say that there is. Um, nothing. Probably not. However, if I found out that there was something weird in this house, I would not be surprised because weird things happen. You put things in one place and it's not there, and you know damn well that you put it there. So I don't know. But I will say this. If that halogen light 
that lights my studio comes flying into my face and burns my face off and the house catches fire and knives start flying at me, I'm going to move. If Christelle starts levitating and gets any stranger than she is now, I'm going to move. <laughs> I'm kidding. But friends, I'm telling you, this, this woman's like the dullest person ever. A Gary, Indiana mother of three claims demons caused her 12-year-old daughter to levitate, and I'm not laughing at demons. I do, in fact, believe in them. I don't believe in all the people that claim to see them, but in this instance, perhaps. It says it caused the 12-year-old daughter to levitate and her 9-year-old son to walk on a hospital ceiling, accounts supported by medical personnel and police officials, according to a shocking report. That's why I'm reporting on it. You always say, why don't anybody ever see these things? Well, this was seen by both medical personnel and police. Um... For LaToya Amons, the late night footsteps, the creaking of the door, and wet footprints left by a shadowy male figure through her living room were merely child's play when that was all of her family had to endure, but then things turned violent. It was March 10, 2012, four months after her family moved into a three-bedroom rental, that Amons saw her daughter floating above her bed, the Indy Star reports. It's the first scream that alerted her grandmother, Rosa Campbell, to the girl's bedroom at about 12 a.m. in that night. Now, this makes you wonder why they did not move. Don't give me the poor excuse. Uh, bullshit. Um, I thought, what's going on? Campbell recalled to the star. Why is this happening? When the girl fell back onto the bed, she gained consciousness but said she had no memory of what has happened. Two clairvoyants told them that the house was filled with more than 200 demons. The family's church recommended pouring olive oil on Amon's children's hands because, of course, they wouldn't recommend moving with smeared crosses along the foreheads as the form of protection. At one clairvoyant's recommendation, the frightened mother created an altar in her basement with a white candle and a statue of Mary, Joseph, and Jesus because she was still too stupid to move. I'm sorry, there's homeless shelters. If there are demons in your house, no matter how poor you are, you might want to consider the option. I've been that poor. It was down there beneath the staircase leading to her kitchen where the family believed the terrifying events began. She and a friend prayed over the altar while filling the area with smoke um, instead of moving. Um, and the reason I'm pointing this out is it was seen, and I'm one of those people that believe that Fukushima might well, very well be what was warned about in Revelations, about the a third of the waters being poisoned and a third of the people dying. I do believe that we are heading towards some kind of a point here. Um, I believe in the quickening, for those of you that know what that is. It said, the girl told healthcare professionals that she sometimes felt like she was being choked when no one was in the room... It says the police were called when both children woke up in the hospital. The youngest began screaming and violently thrashing about. It took five men to hold the seven-year-old down, Campbell told the star. It also said the children's behavior was so unusual and unexplainable that doctors feared her mother was suffering a mental illness and possibly encouraging the kids to act this way. Amons was reported to DCS for possible child abuse, but then was evaluated by a hospital psychiatrist and found to be a sound mind. It says their case manager, Valerie Washington, was then called in to evaluate the children. When she met them, the youngest, she reported, alerted, started to growl and flashed his teeth at her. His eyes then rolled back into his head. Then the seven-year-old lunged for his older brother and put his hands around his throat while saying in a voice that wasn't his own, it's time to die, I will kill you, according to the Washington Report. Once released from the brother's grasp, the nine-year-old allegedly started headbutting his grandmother. Campbell took his hand and started to pray when the boy walked backward up a wall and onto the ceiling. Once there, he flipped and landed perfectly on his feet. Um, I didn't say ran, I'm not talking Fred Astaire or uh, uh, the, the Free Runners, no, walked. Uh, Washington's DCS report is corroborated by Willie Lee Walker, a registered nurse who was in the room with them. He walked up the wall, flipped over the grandmother, and stood there, Walker told the star. 
The seven-year-old boy stayed overnight, and again, a police officer saw it. So, I mean, it is what it is, but I will say this. It is uh, very, very interesting. Let's say that. Friends, do me a favor. Make sure you go to the Arcadia Grill if you are in Canton, Ohio. Why? Because when you do go to the Arcadia Grill, you're going to be getting some of the best food ever. Um, there is a, I'm lo now looking at a cheeseburger with pepper jack cheese and fries on it right in front of my screen, and it looks absolutely delicious. Nobody makes a better drink, and nobody makes better food than the Arcadia Grill. They are on Court Avenue in downtown, downtown Canton, and if you really wish to help me out, go there and let them know Sam from the Correct Views sent you. Friends, I got a four more stories I want to get to, including the dumdy of the day at the end. But before we get there, this is from Boing Boing. Fed judge rules that downloader's IP address is not proof of identity. This is wonderful news. I had somebody, uh, if somebody, well, I've had lots of people come over my house and download something. I'm going to go to jail because they downloaded something. Have I ever done it? Oh, no, never. All right, friends, in a surprisingly sane ruling, Washington District Judge Robert Lance, Lasnick found that an IP address is not sufficient evidence of the identity of a copyright infringer. The case involved the B-movie Elf Man, whose production company have gained notoriety through trollish attacks on people alleged to have downloaded the movie over BitTorrent. Do me a favor, download Elf Man. I'm going to do it just to piss them off. Uh, PirateBay.com. Rolling on a motion to dismiss filed on behalf of one of the defendants, Judge Lansing, a finally a sane judge, notes that Part B is not a valid claim. Quote, the movie studio has actually alleged no more than that the named defendants purchased internet access and failed to ensure that others did not have access to the downloaded copyrighted material, Lansing states. Yes! In other words, you cannot nail somebody due to their IP address because you cannot prove who was on their computer. Thank God America wins another. In other words, the complaint itself states that the account holder may not be the person who downloaded the movie, which is not enough to pursue the case. Simply identifying the account holder associated with an IP address tells us very little about who actually downloaded Elfman using the IP address. Judge Lasnick writes, if there was uh, the, the genius of the day, he would win it. Good judge. Uh, Filmingcops.com, woman forced to expose her body and remove tampon as five cops watch. It's a lawsuit. I bet there is. Friends? I don't care if you're a conservative. I don't care if you're a Republican. Independent conservatives like Michael Savage, Christian conservatives, radical greeny weenies who believe that man is warming the planet, it doesn't really matter. If this doesn't make you realize that we've gone too far, then you, in fact, have gone too far. Chicago, a woman is filing a lawsuit after being deeply humiliated when a group of male police officers forced her to strip on the road, joking about her body as they forced her to remove her bloody tampon. It began when the woman and her two male friends were startled to see an, unmasked, an unmarked car driving toward them on the wrong side of the street, according to the courthouse news. We always have cops running lights where I live. I, th I hope they hit a tree. Not really, but you know what I mean. It's disgusting. They can do anything they want. Officers emerged from the car and decided to perform a search. They detained the woman and her friends and took them to a nearby alley where they could not be seen by residents in the community. Of course, because when you're about to molest somebody like a child molester scum, you do it in your basement or something, don't you? At that point, another cop, Officer Werfel, W-H-E-R-F-E-L, came to the scene and ordered the woman to remove her pants, link there, while surrounded by five other officers, all males. According to reports, the woman begged the officers to keep her pants on. She explained that she had a tampon inside of her because she was menstruating. Not in America. It's not allowed. Are you really forcing me to strip in front of these men? Asked the woman. Yes, said the officer, Werfel, while snapping on latex gloves. Ah, oh, like a Nazi. <laughs> Joseph Mingula. Um, that's when the officer, Werfel, ordered the woman to take out her tampon. She should have pushed it in his freaking face. Humiliated and crying, the woman was forced to pull out her blood-strained tampon in front of everybody and leave it on the ground, exposing herself to the group of men. 
I mean, I'll tell you what, I wear some, I, I, I could be considered a freak by many people, but this is out of the park. This is sadistic. You should be thrown off the forest and have your face beaten in. <sighs> she began probing the woman's vagina. Well, no, he began probing the woman's vagina. As Werfel did this, the other five officers began making jokes about the woman's body, adding to her humiliation. No drugs or other illegal contraband were found on the woman, according to the lawsuit. The woman, however, reports that Officer Werfel planted a sack of heroin on her in order to falsely accuse her after the uh, falsely arrest her after the humiliation. Well, that's what police scum do. Look up Nazis. The woman is now suing for unlawful search and seizure. I hope she wins a fortune. False arrest, more of a fortune, conspiracy to violate her civil rights, hope they make her Bill Gates, failure to intervene and emotional distress and battery according to the courthouse news report. I am in that girl's side in every way. Friends, dailycaller.com, Sheila Jackson Lee, who is never right, is wrong once again. Writing executive orders for Obama to sign is our number one agenda. That's because you are a bullheaded idiot. Socialist, filthy scum, Democratic Representative Sheila Jackson Scum Lee said that the new Congressional Full Employment Caucus will give President Obama a number of executive orders that he can sign. I got something else you can do with them. Tramp. Jackson Lee added that writing up executive orders should be our number one agenda. I can think of something else. We will be answering the call of all of America. Oh, yeah. Because people need work and we're not doing right by them creating work. You dumbass. Most of America can't even tell you what an executive order is. Don't tell me call of America. We're the dumbest nation that ever lived. In fact, I think that should be our number one agenda. Let's write up executive orders. Draft them, of course, and ask the king, the holy God, President Obama, to stand with us on full employment. Jackson Lee Scum added, uh, what an absolutely nauseating report to make. Anybody that votes for her has a pumpkin for her head. Friends, uh, the last thing I want to report on today, also from the Daily Caller, today's dumb of the dumdy of the day, the dunce of the day. Uh, for those of you that don't know, I do the dunce cap of the month. So dunce, dunce, I'm going to win my own. The dunce cap of the month, once a month. And today, um, I've got the dunce of the day. How's that? I'm going to be bringing back uh, the dunce cap of the month. I am like a month behind. I'm going to have to do them both in one show, and it's going to cost me a fortune. <clears throat> a student forced to apologize for emailing pic of Obama kicking a door because of racism. Now, McGill University in Montreal is who wins the dunce of the day originally for asking this student to apologize due to matters of racism. But I'm going to give the dunce of the day to the student for capitulating. Criticizing Obama is not racism. I didn't condemn Sheila Jackson dumbass Lee because she was black. I did it because she was a dumbass. Um, I would vote for Walter Williams as president in a New York second, and the last time I checked, he was, in fact, black. And so the student wins the dunce cap of the month, a uh, dunce cap of the day. A student at McGill University in Montreal, Canada, who wins a close second, Canada was forced to issue a formal apology for emailing a picture, excuse me, of a President Obama kicking open a door because some students thought the image was racist somehow. <laughs> ah, BS. The image was actually an edited GIF that was shown by Jay Leno on The Tonight Show. It humorously suggests that the president may be fed up with press conferences. Miguel student Brian McFarnan, vice president of the university student government, sent out the email with the GIF. And the harmless caption, honestly, midterms get out of here, according to legal insurrection. Uh, Miss Milky the Clown, God bless her, although she betrayed us by getting out because we really needed her. Um, and she used to do the Fukushima updates, and she really, really broke our hearts when she stopped. Um, the world is a less informed place because you did that, Miss Milky. Um, she used to post this all the time. Not only did I not take it as racist, but I thought it was real, and I still wasn't offended. If I was the president, I probably would kick a door. I didn't know it was fake. 
says what happened next is almost unbelievable. Another student issued a formal complaint against Farnan for committing the microaggression. For those not up to date on PC BS lexicon, microaggression is the latest phrase of choice for the leftist radicals seeking to blame racism for common annoyances suffered by people of all races. Minority activists at the University of Michigan, for example, have insisted that trivial slights such as having your opinion second-guessed in group assignment are microaggressions and betray a hostility to win students of color. I am so sick of being called a racist just because I'm right. I don't care what color you are. Uh, it says that the student apologized. That's, that's what's making me sick here. He apologized. Despite the innocent intentions influencing my decisions to use this particular image, I have come to recognize the negative implications. B.S. He's a bonehead. Friends, you are listening to The Correct Views. Sam I. B. DeGangie reporting for The Media Speaks and signing off. Please go look up the work of Kyle Court, D. Lake, and myself, and please donate to the show if you can. You can do so at the correct views at hotmail.com. Good night, friends, and God bless.